Hello and welcome to Thought for Sunday for this, the 26th of May 2024, otherwise known in the church calendar as Trinity Sunday, the week after Pentecost. It is a joy to have you join us wherever you are joining us from and whether it's your first time with us or you've been many times before, welcome. I'm the Reverend James Patterson, one of the ministers here in the Amersham Methodist Circuit. And if you haven't already done so, then as ever, I invite you to subscribe to the channel to get the notifications of all our future broadcasts, whether they're thoughts for Sunday or live streams. Today, as I've said, is Trinity Sunday. One that many preachers have told me is a very tricky Sunday, and it is a tricky Sunday to try and explain what we mean by Trinity. But if, any, if anything, I believe Trinity Sunday is a week in which we just purely celebrate and praise God as our creator, as our redeemer, and as our sustainer. So let's enjoy worship together. Our first hymn is number 15. 15 in singing the faith the splendor of the king how great is our god song that I think and it does speak well into the triune nature of our God. 
So as we reflect on Trinity Sunday and how we relate to God and how God relates to us, our reading today is from John chapter 3, in which there are some very well-known verses which I'm sure you'll be able to recite. So it's the first 17 verses and it's where Nicodemus visits Jesus. Now there was a man, a Pharisee, named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jewish community. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Amen. Thanks be to God for those words. And indeed, what words they are. Here we have Nicodemus, very important man of the time, a Pharisee, I believe also a member of the ruling council, the Sanhedrin. They were the people that Jesus went before when he was on trial the night before he died. But here we have Nicodemus. Now it's got to many people as to why did he come at night. It's exercised many people's brains over the years. There could have been any reason. Could have been he was working all day and so evening was the only time. Others have thought perhaps it was a secret. He wanted to remain hidden. Whatever the reason, I don't think that's the important issue here. But it always makes me smile when I read this passage. Here's Nicodemus coming with question, wanting to know more about Jesus and what he is teaching, what he is prophesying, what he is uh, preaching to the many crowds that follow him. And then Jesus answers. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Oh, I'd have loved to have been a fly on the wall in that room at the time, watching Nicodemus's face as he hears Jesus say such words. And then comes the question, well, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? <laughs> Always makes me smile. It almost is like a riddle in itself, that riddle that I always remember is when is a door not a door? When it's a jar, of course. 
And it just has that kind of a flavour. Here is Nicodemus saying something and then receives something back from Jesus that just sounds completely other to what anybody would have thought. So I wonder why it is one of those readings that we use for Trinity Sunday. It talks a great deal about being born by the Spirit. What is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Those who enter the kingdom of God are born of the Spirit, not solely flesh. Only those who are born of the Spirit can see the kingdom of God. They must be born from above, as it were. And the wind, the Spirit, goes wherever it goes, comes from wherever it comes from. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Spirit enabling us to be the people God has called us to be. And God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. So the Trinity is here all together in one way, shape or form. Discussing Trinity has exercised many a theologian over the years. It's prompted many arguments, many splits. But for me, it's about how, re, how we relate to God. This speaks about being born again. And I wonder if that's that moment of realisation, whether we have grown up in a church or whether we have come to faith later in life. I always feel there's a moment where we don't rely on our parents' faith or on another person's faith but a moment of realisation where we think, yes, I do believe in this. For me, I wonder if that's the moment when we are born of the Spirit. A moment where we declare, whether vocally or in the quietness of our hearts and minds, that God is God. God is creator. God did send Jesus into the world, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. And did send the Holy Spirit when Jesus ascended into heaven so that we may never be alone. For me, it speaks a great deal of relationship. Here is God relating to all that God created. The heavens, the earth, us. Wanting to be in relationship. You see it throughout the Hebrew Bible, otherwise known as the Old Testament, of how God longs to be in relationship with people and does everything God can to enable people to be in a relationship. Even throughout the Exodus, he appeared as a pillar of cloud by day and a cloud of fire by night so that people would know they were not on their own and God was relating with them. Then Jesus comes into the world, shows us how to relate to one another to come alongside the stranger, those who perhaps society would cast aside and enable to live on the margins. And also the power of the Holy Spirit that even when Jesus was not here in physical form, here on, in the world, his power, the power that enabled him to do the things that he did, the power that enabled him to be on that cross, to die, and the power that moved that stone from the tomb and raised him from the dead so that we might live. That is the power available to us, otherwise known as the Holy Spirit. So for me, Trinity Sunday is just a wonderful moment to celebrate how God relates to us, but also a time to reflect on how we relate to God. As we walk in this world, as we look at the, the news of all that is happening, the general election, wars in Gaza and all manner of things, do we look at it through the eyes of faith? What God might be calling us, prompting us to do, how to respond? How do we relate to God? Perhaps many of us feel we could do better. Perhaps many of us feel that we could pray more, read the Bible more. Be more attentive. And sometimes it's easy to really lash ourselves, as it were. Be angry at ourselves that we don't relate to God as we ought to do. But perhaps today is that time where we can just be. Celebrate who God is and what God means to us. So that 
in all our tomorrows, whatever those hold for us, whatever pain, suffering or indeed joy might be round the corner. May we reflect on how we might see God. May we be more attentive to God at work around us. For I believe we see God in the people whom we share life with. We see God in the stranger. We see God in those who come over in the small boats. The people whose society would otherwise cast aside. That's what I'm meaning. We might see God. In fact, we will see God in the most unlikely places. If only we would look and be open to that relationship. For who knows what more joy and love we might find out about the God who invites us to be part of God. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, loving and gracious God, we thank you for all that you have done over so many years. Thinking about how you enabled people to walk through the wilderness for those 40 years as a pillar of cloud in day and a pillar of fire by night. How you enabled and empowered people to do the seemingly impossible. How you sent Jesus, your son, into this world, not to condemn it, but to save it. To show us how to live, how to relate to you, but equally how to relate to one another. How to be like you in this world. We look at the news, gracious God, and we lift all those headlines before you. The upcoming general election, and perhaps many of us haven't got a clue how to vote or what to do for the best. We look at the war in Gaza and in Ukraine and in so many other parts of the world where, re where conflict rages. And we look on in horror, with anger perhaps, thinking, where are you? Why are you allowing this, God? You are there in the midst of it. You're there in the person who comes alongside another to help them. You are there in the aid lorries trying to bring support. You are there, if only we would see. So gracious God, give us the eyes of faith. Give us the openness of heart to experience you in so many different, incredible ways. Whether through our loved ones through the smile of another, through a stranger. Help us to be attentive to you, that we may learn more of you, but equally how we may share your love to others in this world, and especially to the seemingly unlovable. So guide and bless us and those whom we know and love this day and forevermore. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, it's been a joy as ever to share in worship with you and whatever the day holds, I pray it will be a blessed one. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Our final hymn is hymn number 338, which to me is a great one to end with. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. Thank you, O Lord our God. Take care. Jesus, my